So, what I want to share about, and just just relatively briefly, um, because you've gotten a lot of food already, <laughs> a lot of good spiritual food, is uh, this song "God Is on the Move" and the, that that whole theme. Um, there's so much happening in the world today, uh, you know, good and bad, scary and hopeful. And I think it's important that we keep the perspective that God is actively moving and working in the world around us. Um, we've seen, especially Mother Moon leading the way in terms of providential activities, big events in Korea, public events, for by, you know, thousands of people, the big event in uh, Tokyo, Japan, and then the huge event that happened in the Philippines, which uh, maybe some of you saw on online. And then coming to uh, America and this big successful event in Madison Square Garden in New York City and getting a huge response from the, the American Christian, traditional Christian community. Um, and things are, are moving and moving and moving. Um, there's a plan for in September at the time of uh, Father Moon Sungwa um, uh, anniversary to have uh, an international uh, peace conference for religious leaders particularly bringing, bringing um, Christian clergy from America to participate, but for people from all over the world. Uh, in fact, now we're, we're participating in this 40-day, uh, just started yesterday, making conditions for the success of that event and the, and the many events surrounding that. Event. So I encourage you if, you, if you haven't started, please start today. Please join in this 40 days of prayer and offering. But sometimes I think we need to remind ourselves that God is real. <laughs> And God is moving and doing things in, in the world around us and in our lives. And I think it's important, uh, especially from our divine principle perspective, if you just think about the, the, the core of the divine principle, the structure of the divine principle is amazing. It's an amazing uh, book to help us to understand the richness of the truth. You know, it starts out with the ideal. You know, the I ideal of a healthy, happy, fulfilling life and understanding what God's original design was. And then, recognizing that we're not living in that kind of world, talks about the, the breakdown. What's the disease that we have? What's the, the, the problem that we have in, in the fall of man? Why aren't we living in that ideal? And by understanding the, the disease, you know, of fundamentally it's the breakdown of God's true love in our life, in our experience, and the, the rise of selfishness as a central driving factor in, in our lives. But an amazing thing is that the third chapter of the Divine Principle, it's called eschatology. It's like, you know, I was always kind of wondering, what does it mean to escape something? or What is the eschatology all about? But it's the, the technical term for the study of the end times, the last days, the end of the world, you know, the, the, the consummation of human history, what's going to happen, the doctrine of the last days. And the thing is, is that particular chapter is extremely hopeful and positive. You know, then, and then from then on, the rest of the, the divine principle, in fact, if you include eschatology, 75, three quarters of it is talking about the process to heal, the process to get us back to God's original ideal, get us back to that hope. You know, talking about the Messiah, talking about resurrection, predestination, uh, the Trinity and Christology, and then the history of God's work of salvation. So that's, that's the whole outline of, of the divine principle. So the divine principle offers us a lot of hope, especially beginning with eschatology. You know, there's hope. And we tend to have this, this as religious people, oh, God is going to take care of everything. But it really you know, gives us hope because, yes, God is there, but also a challenge because God has designed us to be partners in accomplishing that. So if you think, look, when we're looking at the history of restoration, that's actually kind of a challenging and even <laughs> very difficult course when we look at that. Let me read some of the quotes from uh, the Divine Principle. This is from the section on eschatology. The sinful world brings humankind sorrow and causes God to grieve. That's, you know, causes God to grieve is a very important, profound understanding the Father Moon brings to us, especially uh, speaking to the Christian tradition, that God is a loving parent with a suffering heart. Would God abandon this world in its present misery? God intended to create a world of goodness 
and experience it from it the utmost joy. Yet, due to the human fall, the world came to be filled with sin and sorrow. If this sinful world were to continue forever in its present state, then God would be an impotent and ineffectual God who failed his creation. And we know that's not true, right? Therefore, God will save this sinful world by all means. This is the hopeful statement that no matter how bad circumstances are, God is always working and moving to save the children. Just like any parent which sees the children suffering, doesn't sit back and say, oh yeah, maybe let them suffer. No, desperately wants to save the children as soon as possible. This is the parent's heart. This is God's heart towards us. Later in, in eschatology, the center of God's kingdom on earth is to be human beings. That's us, right? Although God created the first ancestors, ancestors with that intention, they fell. Hence, his will for the earth was not realized. Since then, the primary goal of the province of restoration has been nothing less than to rebuild the kingdom of heaven on earth. Again, that's the vision. That's the hope that we have. God's absolute commitment is to build that kingdom of heaven on earth in this world. Uh, in Isaiah, you know, it says, God says, I have spoken and I'll bring it to pass. I purposed it, and I will do it. Can we trust God? Yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah. I may not be able to trust you, and you may not trust me, but we can all trust who? God. 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 Absolutely, absolutely. That's our hope. That's our hope, that no matter what, we can trust God, our Heavenly Parent. The challenge comes with the second part of that. And that has to do with our responsibility here in the section on predestination. According to the principle of creation, the way that God designed us and designed the universe, God's purpose of creation can only be realized when human beings complete their portion of responsibility. Ouch. <laughs> Our poor, you know, that's radical to say that God's will can only be accomplished when human beings do their part. And it continues, although God's will, God's desire and God's commitment to realize this purpose through the province of restoration is absolute and beyond human influence, no matter what we do, God's not going to give up on God's purpose, on God's design. Yet, its fulfillment necessarily requires the accomplishment of the human portion of responsibility. And this is the challenge that often, as religious people, we don't pay attention to. You know, it's so easy to expect God to take care of everything. You know, oh, God, God's going to take care of everything. God designed us to be partners, right? It's a partnership. In order for us to see changes in the world, God can work miracles and will work amazing things. And yet, God doesn't do it without us without us doing our part, our portion of responsibility. And that's the key component that we, we also need to remember. As we see, look at providential history, it's been so painful to see the ups and downs. And, you know, God sets up a great circumstance and situation only to have the people lose faith. And, and the problems get delayed again and again. And we've experienced that so much, right? But God designed us in partnership to be co-creators. And God wants to experience that great joy from building this amazing world to creating incredible things in partnership with us. Uh, even uh, we read, uh, this is from the Divine Principles section uh, on the uh, lessons learned from Abraham's course. This is the principle of restoration, looking at how God worked through Abraham's family. The Divine Principle says, Abraham's course demonstrates that God's predestination concerning the manner in which his will is fulfilled is conditional. That means God's plan and vision, it just depends on what's going to happen. It's not automatically going to happen any one way or another way. It's conditional. The providence, again to emphasize, the providence of restoration cannot be fulfilled by God's power alone. 
Got it? <laughs> cannot be fulfilled by God's power alone. It can only be fulfilled in conjunction with the human portion of responsibility. That's you and me. I, I encourage you, um, invest some time in the, your divine principle study. I mean, if you haven't heard, studied it before, um, I, I can give you a copy. Um, I can give you a digital copy if you want one. But, uh, and if you want to come and study with us. But it's so important to uh, the richness of the divine principle in terms of giving us an understanding of the design of the universe and also how God's working to heal this universe is so precious and so valuable. God is on the move. And the divine principle shows it over and over how God has been working through history and even we can see how God is working in our lives today. And the question behind all that is why? Why is God constantly working? Why hasn't God given up? And this is probably one of the most important things that true parents, that Father and Mother Moon, have been teaching and trying to convey to us, is that God is a suffering parent who deeply, deeply loves the children. Every one of them. And desperately wants to end the suffering and bring them back to God. And yet the course of restoration, this providence to heal the world has been so difficult and so messy. It seems like we never seem to get it straight. You know, Oh, here's the easy way. Oh, no, I'm not going to go that way. I'd rather struggle for a while or, and do my own thing. But God never gives up on us. That's our hope. And God is constantly moving, moving to bring about change and transformation in our lives. So this song that we, that we sang, last song we sang, and we're going to sing it again because, you know, I want... You know that song, you get an ear bug, you know, it's stuck in your ear and you hear it over and over. I really want God is on the move, hallelujah, to be something that you wake up going, oh man, I got that song going in my head again. God is on the move. God is on the move, hallelujah, each and every day, right? I love the words of this, you know, because we'll sing it again in a little bit. But anytime a heart turns from darkness to light, anytime in our lives we overcome selfishness, and go to unselfishness. You know, God is moving. Anytime temptation comes to us, and we're challenged, and that we overcome it, we stand and fight it, God is on the move, right? I love this song, you know? Anytime someone lives to serve and not be served, right? Living for the sake of others. That's when God is on the move. That's how God moves in the world and in our lives. Anytime in weakness, we get down and pray, you know, it's a partnership. And that part of that partnership is our prayer life and spending quality time with God, our Heavenly Parent. Not just, oh yeah, thank you very much for the food, let's eat. <laughs> it's taking time, committing time, and investing in quality time with God, our Heavenly Parent. So we develop and grow in that relationship. It's also the time we spend in, in understanding the truth. You know, there to speak the truth. It sets people free, right? That's why we study. This is the importance of Hunnike every day. Reading, filling our minds with the truth, with God's perspective and God's word. So daily study, daily prayer, daily investment in serving and bringing a change in the environment around us. And a great, this is a great conclusion. I see a generation standing on the truth. That's us. That's all of us. In each and every nation, God is on the move. God is on the move through us, through you and me. So, let me close with this from um, Mother Moon. She says, Though you are in this clear state, she's talking about being blessed or being saved and receiving the Messiah, no, you still have responsibilities. Please consider this. Even if the water is pure, if it remains stagnant, and the quality, de the, if it remains stagnant, the quality deteriorates and it begins to rot. Even though that water is pure, it has to move. It must flow toward the ocean. Living beings that are dying will revive wherever this true water of life flows. That is why it is necessary for tribal messiahs, that's us, to act upon their responsibilities. The tribal messiah movement will become a huge wave. God is moving powerfully in our world and through the conditions that we're making even the small conditions that we're making we're giving God even more power 
to see God's will accomplished in this world. Again, the degree that God's will can be accomplished depends on us, God's partners. So, let's be good partners for God, our Heavenly Parent. Please join me in prayer. Good morning, Father, Mother, God, our, our loving Heavenly Parent. We are so grateful for your presence in our lives and for your, your commitment and perseverance. When we look at the province of restoration and we look at even our own lives and see how many mistakes we've made and, and how easy it would be for you just to give up and, and, and throw away us as, as worthless people. And yet, because of your deep heart and your deep love, you've never given up with us. So that no matter how dark, no matter how difficult our circumstances are, you are always there, desperate to bring us back to you. Heavenly Father, please continue to grow our hearts and minds so we can understand and appreciate you. Heavenly Parent, we determine ourselves to be the sons and daughters that can comfort your heart, that can bring the healing that this world desperately needs. Heavenly Parent, please work through us. Please guide us. We want to bring joy to you as faithful sons and daughters. So, Heavenly Parent, as your sons and daughters, so grateful for the blessings we have, we offer up again ourselves to you and determine ourselves. And we report this together. Amen and adieu. All right, so please uh, turn to your neighbor and let's share with how God is on the move in your life today. <laughs>